someone's turning around in my neighbor's driveway. Hey guys, how's it going? We're going to do something a little differently today. My wife and I were at Restore, which is a Habitat for Humanity store. Excuse me. They'll pull out old stuff, uh, anything from like old houses and buildings and stuff. Um, cabinets, sinks, random like hardware, nails, whatever, anything, and donations too. Um, and then they resell it. It's a really cool store. There's a bunch of them. They're all over the place. Uh, we have a few here in Southern California. Every now and then we'll go and just kind of see what they have, see if anything, you know, strikes our fancy. If we want to do like a project, do some kind of new furniture piece. Because most of the stuff is in really good shape and just needs a couple coats of paint um, and some hardware replacement and you're good to go. It's really fun to do. They have sections of like old, you know, sprinkler parts and, and just random fittings and these lampshades. I came across this like outdoor faucet, like hose tap faucet system thing. And, and this guy, they fit into one another. And, <laughs> and they picked up this lampshade and put that in there. Uh, and thought, hey, that'd be a really cool kind of quirky outdoor lamp sort of thing. I've never made a lamp before, but who knows? Maybe it could be good if I just gave it a try. So today we're just going to be making a lamp and I have no idea what I'm doing, but that's half the fun, right? So here we go. Yeah, we're off to Home Depot to get some stuff. Uh, in case you can't tell by the lighting, it took way longer than I initially planned at Home Depot, but then what else is new? It always takes longer than you think at Home Depot. It's funny, in my family we always have a joke like, you never just go to Home Depot once and it looks like that's true because I'm probably gonna have to go back to get a couple things. Thought that I would just take my time there and then I wouldn't have to go back. Didn't work. But anyway, it's nighttime now so I can't use the natural light. So if the quality of the video is a little poorer now, which it definitely is, I apologize. We got some wood, dug fur. You can't really see it, it's in shadow. There we go. We're gonna have a piece kind of come down at an angle, I think. Then, this isn't the real wood that I'm using. And then another piece of wood that's gonna attach like that. Under this piece, there's gonna be the actual light. I know it doesn't look like much right now. And it may not look like much when I'm done with it either. <laughs> but that's the idea. As far as like the theme of this lamp, <laughs> kind of outdoor garden theme. And so I got this other piping to actually attach to the, the shade. I also bought this little make a lamp kit. It was still cheaper for me to buy this whole kit than it was to buy the cable and all this other stuff separately. I thought about putting this on um, like a, like hooking this to a rotary switch, like the kind, the normal kind like on a lamp where you twist it and it clicks and then you keep twisting the same way and it turns off and on and off and on again. The only problem is this thing is just so long. The wood is like here and then you've got all the stuff sticking out the front. By the time you, you screw this in, this is going to be sticking out the back of the wood at least a half an inch. I couldn't actually find a rotary switch at Home Depot. I could order one online, but I don't want to wait for that. And actually my initial plan for this lamp was to create my own switch, to have a break in the hot wire and then have like a piece of copper or something on here and just make it so that this basically bridged the gap in the hot wire and that would close the circuit. The problem there is that as of right now, you know, this is all metal and probably a conductor. I don't know, this is probably brass. I'm not super great at knowing which metals are, are good at conducting, but I certainly would not want to risk getting electrocuted uh, just because I couldn't find a rotary switch at Home Depot. I think I still want to do that, but I don't want to do it here because this is just too long. So let's take this apart and see what I can do. I think this is crimped on here. I don't know that I can take that off. Yeah. I don't think that's coming off. Cool. 
So you can see this piece is just super long. Way longer than it needs to be. I could get like a, a different bolt to go through here, but I like the size of this because it hugs this housing really well. I don't know if I have anything strong enough to cut this though. This, it feels pretty solid. I'd love to just cut it at the threads like here. So I still have a little play and I can screw it in and out just as, just barely as much as it needs to go. Yeah, I think I could actually cut it right there and it would be good. I just don't know that I can cut it. So I'm going to do some, some tests here. Okay, it seems like maybe I could cut it because I'm just kind of cutting at the surface here. It seems pretty soft. Seems like I could maybe cut it because I'm getting a little bit of, I don't know if you can really see that, but it's going through a little and that's just with uh, the hacksaw blade, not even in the hacksaw, it's just me kind of messing around with it. I might even just file this down because that's, so far it seems to be doing pretty well. I feel like maybe I could get that. Take a while. At this rate, I could whip out the Dremel. I wonder if I could score it and break it. I don't know. You gotta get the mask on when you're working with little metal particles. Except it fogs up my glasses and I can't see. Just found out. And saw on for a minute and you can see that it's hollow. I don't know if you can see that. That little dark spot right there is where it goes through. So that's good, it's less metal I have to cut through. All right, so I've gotten through it quite a bit here. I feel like I might break it in a little bit. It's still crazy strong, but man, we're so close. And to be honest, I'm using this with my bare hands because I didn't feel like getting the actual like saw body out. I just had the, saw, the, the blade right here. But check it out, this is only after a couple minutes of sawing through this thing. I'm gonna try to break it. Oh yeah. That worked great. Got a workout too. This used to be sticking out of here like that. It was that long. And now it's that long. And out of focus. I have to say, it's pretty perfect. Now this goes in. Oh, that's a thing of beauty. That's as far as it, as it comes. Right here is where I'm gonna put a piece of copper or something. Make it so this is all insulated. And then you, you turn it off by twisting it out. And then when you twist it in, it bridges that gap in the hot wire. And there you go. Bob's your uncle. All right, I'm gonna put the pipe part of this together just so you can get an idea of what it's going to look like. So um, here's where the light bulb goes in. I don't know what it's called because I just don't. Normally this would go in here. So that hangs down. Light bulb here. This guy is going to get connected to this. Kids cover your ears to this brass nipple. Like I might bypass this actually and just screw this nipple directly into this collar. Okay, so then this guy goes in here. This guy, his elbow goes on here. And I'm gonna take the switch off, by the way, because I don't need it. This guy goes in here. Black pipes are always disgusting. And then this guy goes on here. I don't wanna get my dirty hand all over that piece of wood that I'm going to actually use, so we'll just pretend this is the actual piece of wood. This goes on there. This guy goes on there. So you can kind of get an idea of what it's going to look like. And I'm done. Do you like it yet? I don't know. We'll see. When I get to a certain point, screwing it in, it snaps and pushes forward. The problem there is that when it does that, there's all this play right there. We can't have that. So basically I need to figure out where it does that and then go back a little bit. And that's where I need this to stop screwing in. So I thought I'd take this little rubber washer 
that was on this piece that I cut off, I'll widen this hole a little bit so that I can get it right in there. And I think that thickness would actually be great, be perfect. Then you, you screw it in until it's totally snug. Light comes on, you go out. Those are cricket. I jumped away, okay. Uh, and then go out as far as you want, turn it off, and at a certain point, um, it stops. Can't go anymore. All right, we're gonna try this bit right here. It's 3 eighths of an inch. It seems to match this right here pretty darn closely. It's a little smaller, but I'd rather this be snug on here. Wow. That didn't work. Running out of room on my workbench here. Anybody have a good technique for doing this? Clamp it, I guess. Jib, clamp it. should be wearing a mask for this too. Maybe the best technique would actually be to do this by hand. Just get the bit in there so it can kind of start to scrape away at the walls. I don't know, but that's my educated guess. I see little bits of rubber falling, so that's a good sign. Here, if I twist the drill bit in while I pull this out, eh, it's a little bigger. It's still gonna be kind of hard to get on there. So what I should do, actually, is go up one size from here, which is quite a jump, but go from 3 8 to half. Yeah, that's just a little too big. Let's keep going. I wish I had something to taper. That's my, that's my main thing. I don't have anything really that <clears throat> tapers, I don't think. I can't even pull it. I don't want to break it. That would suck. Maybe I just jam this thing on there. Alright, we're going to try it in the vise this way. Oh yeah! Yeah, that looks pretty good. My drill's dying. Not bad, still not quite big enough, but we're getting there. Get the battery on here. Alrighty, let's try that. Perfect. Let's see if that solved our problem. I think it did. There's no play in there. And that was the main concern. So I think that problem is solved. All right, now I've never used <laughs> liquid electrical tape before, but I feel like this is probably the best thing for the job. All of this is metal, as I mentioned. I don't want to touch this if this is any way connecting to the hot wire, which it will be. Um, so I need to create a barrier here. Maybe I should shake it. Woo! <laughs> Probably says use in a well-ventilated area. Is that your heat sparks are up in flame? Adequate ventilation. All right, well, I'm not gonna have prolonged. I can't even think, it's already getting to me. I'm not going to have prolonged contact with it. It kind of smells sweet. It kind of smells like candy almost. <laughs> Get some fresh air in here. We're going to put some stuff away while we're waiting for that to set up. I'm going to clip off this guy. I don't know whether this is on or off right now. There's no way to tell really from the outside. I am going to leave just enough room to grab onto this in case I need to do that. 
I realize that uh, this is in the off position right now. I can just grab that and switch it over. Wire is all ready to go. Um, we have to redo that because I have to feed that all through here. <laughs> so forget, forget I did that. Just a good practice run. Alright, it's a new day. And actually it's a new night. You can tell from my shirt. Uh, I didn't just go in and change my shirt. It was a brand new day, but I had a shoot today. So I couldn't actually work on this until right now. Uh, but there you go. So, bad lighting still. Oh, sorry. But it has given us a chance uh, to let this liquid electrical tape dry. Uh, and it's still kind of gummy, actually. But uh, I did put it on pretty thick. We might, before we actually plug this thing in and give it a go, uh, or at least before I touch this thing, I'm going to want to put at least one more coat on there just so uh, I don't get shocked or killed. You know, on second thought, I was going to, the shade was going to be here, and I was going to have a piece of wood coming out just above the shade, and a diagonal piece just to kind of reinforce that wood. But I came up with that idea before I, I got the idea for this piping. I think that looks okay, just like that, with no other wood coming out of this thing. So I think we're actually going to go for that and if, if we if we proceed with this direction and I don't like it then maybe we'll cut some wood. But for now I think I like this. The bulb and everything connects to this and then this connects to the, to the pipe and then the pipe connects to the wood. Great. This, however, the shade, there's no real good, it, it passes through this hole with a lot of room around it. And I was trying to think of how I could get this to sit in there. So at one point I thought, put a piece of wood on top of here and then nail through the wood and bend the nails up around the inside of here. But that's not gonna be a very elegant solution. Really, you're supposed to attach something around the outside, around this collar. So I could strap something onto this pipe right here that, that grabs on this way, but then I just thought it'd be fun to to put like a rubber gasket or something just that sits on the top of this right here so you could kind of pivot it. And I thought, well, so something like a ball joint would be nice, but I don't know what to make a ball joint from. And then it dawned on me, maybe I could use an actual ball, like a tennis ball. I've got some tennis balls here. Let's try that, I don't know, you guys, uh, what would you guys use to fix that? I was looking around at Home Depot forever trying to find something, and I looked at some rubber gaskets and stuff, but for the price, I was like, this is insane. Pack of like four rubber gaskets was like $10. And we're talking like tiny, like uh, the size of, of this one that I put on here. Boom, get my phone out of the way. Something like that. Got our little circle there. Wow, I didn't think I'd have such a hard time getting through this tennis ball. I don't want to push too hard and stab myself. Jeez. I feel like if I could just get it started. Oh. There we go. Kind of. Kind of not. Man, that worked up more of a sweat than the cutting this thing in half. Okay, Blah. dust. That's pretty perfect, and it kind of swings a little bit, which I think is okay. Alright, we're 
we're just gonna try again and see what happens. We'll go slow. Just keeps catching it. It's frustrating and I really don't want to ruin my drill press. Frustrating. Boing. This bit isn't as big as I'd like it to be. As I thought, that bit is not big enough to fit this guy. This guy is a sixteenth of an inch bigger, and he just keeps catching. I don't want to ruin my drill press, and I don't want to buy another bit. So I'm going to come up with another solution, hopefully. Alright, we're going to try this uh, little Dremel <laughs> sanding adapter. I actually have a Dremel drill press, but uh, to be honest, I just don't want to get my Dremel out right now. Alright, looks like I can thread it on now. It's a little tight. Yeah. Okay, so I can thread it, but uh, I don't want to split the wood. It, the hole kind of tapers in. So I'm going to keep sanding. Got it sanded out enough for this to thread into there. And here is where we're going to build our own little custom switch. So I think I'm going to stain the wood, fill this hole actually with uh, some more uh, liquid tape, and uh, we'll go from there. My neighbors are watching uh, some sort of sports game. Sports ball. I basically just need to drill a channel from this hole to this hole for the wires. And I think this is probably the best way to do it. Cool. The bit broke. Man, that really sucks. Probably shouldn't keep using that. Let me try this one. It's not the prettiest thing in the world, but it'll do, I think. Well, it's daytime again. I tried a couple spring options to be my conductor that bridges the gap between the hot wire, but I couldn't find anything that really worked. So I'm in the middle of, and I got my actual hacksaw out now, I'm in the middle of uh, sawing this bolt. This is a really awful sound and I apologize. Bingo. So I've put liquid tape on that bad boy. <laughs> I'm really, really wanting to make sure this thing is insulated because I do not want to get shocked and I don't want anyone else to get shocked. So I'm taking extra precautions. Alrighty, so we gotta come through here, here, Oh, one thing I didn't do, I'm glad that I remembered, but I'm pissed that I remembered right now. Because <laughs> now I have to do this one more time. I didn't do the uh, electrician's knot. That's it. Okay. Cool. Now before we do anything else, I actually want to plug this in.
Haha! The light works! Ouch. <laughs> Wait, is this a... Oh snap, this is a incandescent bulb. I didn't realize we still had any. Not too bad. It's a little tight up here. I actually like that. <laughs> um, okay. <clears throat> I don't have actual wire strippers. So these will have to do. So, I'm going to bend this piece of metal. And you'll see why in a second. Oh, I can't push on it. There we go. Yay! Alright, we got the gardeners outside. We got glue on this guy. The tape is kind of dry. And we're gonna put it down in here. It's a little later in the day. Had to work on a couple projects. Um, and my neck is killing me right now, so I'm gonna be turning like this for a few minutes. This is actually the top. This is the bottom. Cable comes out of this hole. Uh, I just put some electrical tape right here to secure it for now. It goes down the channel. I actually inserted those bent pieces of metal, those little uh, securing bracket things, attached them to either side of this hole. Attach the hot wire on this end, the cut one, to this piece of metal, and then the one that comes from the wall, attach that end of the hot wire to the other piece of metal. Those are attached to the walls of the wood, um, and I've uh, put some liquid tape inside there for insulation. When you screw in this little faucet thing, the bolt that is glued to the bottom comes up, bridges the gap between these two pieces of metal, and the light bulb turns on. So I've tested that the light bulb actually does turn on when these are touching, and now I'm just kind of waiting for some glue to dry. Once everything's hooked up, we're gonna test it with the voltmeter, make sure we're not gonna get electrocuted if we touch this thing. I've insulated it so many times um, through here. I can't imagine it will, but just to be safe. Before that happens, I'm not going to touch this thing. I also cut a little channel, uh, a separate channel, for the neutral wire to go around. Um, just because I didn't want it going across and just being exposed. I mean, I could have put it on the inside of the wall, but it's getting so crowded in here. I just wanted to get out of the way. And then just kind of sealed everything up with some glue and some liquid tape. And then the only thing to do after that will be to put the shade on, put the bulb in, and there we'll have it. So one thing I didn't really think about is the fact that this bulb was going to come down this far. Uh, but I can find another bulb and I can, I can figure out a different solution to, to get the shade down lower. But this is the lamp. It is finished um, with the exception of the whole shade debacle. So let's test it out. I've, I've checked it with the voltmeter. Everything looks good. So we should just twist this and it'll come on. Ah. It's a little crackly, <laughs> but it works. Um, to be honest with you, I might scrap my custom switch because it kind of sucks. I proved that it works, but uh, it's just kind of fiddly. The wires in there, you know, the thing comes up so slowly that the contact it makes with the wires is so intermittent. I guess. So I broke down and I ordered a rotary switch, which honestly, if I had ordered one the day that I started this project, it would have been here by now. <laughs> I didn't think this project would take so long. I just had so many interruptions. But yeah, I got a rotary switch. I'm gonna totally replace what's in there now with just the rotary switch so that when you turn this, it'll turn on and off that way. And I won't have to worry about getting electrocuted because honestly, I'm still worried only because I did it myself. Even though I checked it with the meter and did all the precautions necessary, the electricity is just really freaky, you know? And it's just not, not worth messing with it. But anyway, I hope you guys enjoyed this project. 
I enjoyed making it. I think once I get the the um, shade figured out, it'll be pretty cool looking. I wanted to get this video up as soon as possible, which is why the lampshade is not fixed just yet. Because um, if I fix it, uh, it's probably going to take a day or two. And I just wanted to get this video up. So in an upcoming video, I will have an update with how the lamp looks um, in the future. And I will mount it somewhere where it looks cool. Um, and you can actually see it in action. Thanks again for watching, guys. If you like this video, please subscribe, like, share, do all the normal things. Hit the little bell button so you get all the notifications uh, for my videos. Um, thanks again, guys. And see ya!